Hello, welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about three things. Doom, DOS, and ports on the RG 35XX. Now, there's a good reason why I'm putting these three consoles together. For instance, Doom is a DOS game, and some of these ports were also originally DOS games. But in Garlic OS, Doom has its own console icon because it actually uses PR Boom, a software, I guess, designed specifically to run Doom. And ports similarly have their own console icon and will often be optimized to run on this system, or at least the code's been brought over to this system. However, for the majority of old computer games that don't have ports, we've got the DOS console. Now, this video is intended to get you up and running with these consoles. I'm not going to go into too much detail because if I go on controller mapping and DOS emulation options, it's going to get overwhelming quick. But um, enough with the intro, let's get right into it. First on the docket, we're going to get Doom running. Now on the computer, I'm going to go to the SD card. I'm going to open my ROMs folder. And since Doom doesn't have a folder yet, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to name it Doom with all capital letters. Now, the Doom emulator requires WAD or WAD files. And you can find them by searching online. Um, not going to get into where you can find them, but go ahead, get the Doom WAD files, copy them over to the Doom folder you created. Should be all set there. Now, switching over to the old RG35XX, we're going to go to Consoles, and you can see Doom now has its own icon. And when we click on it, you can see all the Doom WADs that we copied over. I'm going to go ahead and launch Doom. Give it a second, and there you go. We're playing Doom. <laughs> well, seeing this game full screen, yeah, I was playing it on the Ambernick, and I was like, oh man, this, this game holds up, but playing it full screen, the graphics really do show their age. But you know what, this is something I've been noticing while playing games on the Ambernick. A lot of these older games, especially PlayStation 1 games, have kind of aged into being on a handheld. Like the graphics tend to look better, like they've aged better playing them on a handheld. And when you play them on a TV, obviously the graphics look like they've aged poorly. But I don't know, it's kind of a strength of playing these old games on the uh, handheld. I don't know, just something I've noticed. But anyway, you can see, Doom's running. Another thing we got running on this console. Now, we're going to talk DOS games. Now, just like the last time, we're going to need to go to the ROMs folder on our SD card. We're going to open the DOS folder and you want to copy all your DOS games. I've got uh, some DOS games on my library on the right. And one thing to note, your DOS games should be in a single zip file. At least that's what I've run into. If your DOS game is a folder or a CD image, I suggest putting them together into a single zip file. And for the example in this video, I'm going to copy over, what is this, Crystal Caves, I've got a Commander Keen, and Jazz Jackrabbit. I know those are some classic, popular DOS games. But now that I've copied them over, let's swap back over to the Ambernick. We're going to go to Consoles, and you can see now... Microsoft DOS has its own logo. Now I'm running a custom skin, so your DOS logo might be different than what I have here. Still, click on it. You can see the zip files that we copied are here in the games list. Now, first, I'm going to launch Commander Keen. Okay, this starts right up, 
and we can see an old style menu, some device options. I'm just going to assume everything's fine. Click the button to continue and look at that. The game launches. This one was easy since I believe the zip file only contained a single exe file. Now we're going to show you most DOS games won't actually launch that easy. So let's hit menu to exit the game and try launching Jazz Jackrabbit. Now this is a DOS game. You can see here we have a list of files. We have to actually choose the EXE that we want to launch the game with. Now I'm going to scroll down to jazz.exe, press the B button to launch it, and here we get a setup prompt. Um, go ahead, click through. I'm going to pick Sound Blaster 16 as the sound option. Pretty sure Sound Blaster 16 is the standard for this generation. Um, I'm not going to pick the highest quality sound. I've read that high quality sound can cause stutters in these DOS uh, emulator games. But go ahead, pick whatever you want, and game launches. Ooh, speaking of sound stutters, I don't like that. I get that stuttering here in the menu. Let's, uh, let's hope it's not in the game. Alright, loading the level, and... Oh, look at that. Sounds good. That's nice. And there we are. Jazz Jackrabbit is running. But, we need to show you some things related to that list in the beginning. So, let's exit the game go back in and see here when we relaunch it it brings us back to the list and if we scroll down launch the game it starts over from the main menu instead of most of the time on garlic os they'll resume where you left off so we need to fix both of that now hit menu we're going to exit the game relaunch it so you can see here's the list again but when we navigate to the exe file to start the game, we want to hit the right arrow button. The right arrow button will set it for auto start. Once it's set for auto start, press B and you start the game. And now here, if I hit menu to leave the game and then come back, for one, it skips the file list and two, it resumes where it left off. So you know the save states and resumes are actually working. Now we're good to go. That's, that's some of the basics of DOS games. That should get you up and running. And this setup experience, I imagine, is going to be typical for most of your DOS games. Now, before we end this DOS game section, I'm going to cover one last thing. And that's something you might find in games like Crystal Caves. Now, if we open Crystal Caves, you'll see first, I labeled it episode one, but if we look at the file list, there's actually three volumes, Crystal Cave one, two, and three. Now, each of those EXEs is a different game or volume or episode of the game. And if we pick one as an auto launch, we won't be able to get to the other two. So in order to fix that, I'm actually going to switch back to the computer. We're going to go to our ROMs folder, our DOS folder. And to address this particular issue, we're going to make three copies of the Crystal Caves file. Now, you can see the Crystal Caves file is actually really small. It's less than a meg. So it's not going to matter having multiple copies on this SD card. But we make copies, and then I'm going to rename them for Episodes 2 and Episodes 3. Switching back to the RG35XX, you can see we have three entries for Crystal Caves. I'm going to go ahead and launch Episode 1. And from the file list, I'm going to set the auto launch to cc1.exe. 
So this makes this zip file auto launch to Crystal Caves 1, which makes sense because that's what we named it. Then I'm going to go to Crystal Caves episode 2. Similarly, I'm going to go ahead, set uh, CC2 as the auto launch for that. Then, you know what's happening on an episode 3. Same deal. Auto launch CC3. And there we go. We have uh, auto launch on each of them, even though there's three games in one file. Simple as that. And the final thing we're going to cover on DOS is what happens if you mess up the auto launch settings. Now, for that, we're going to put the card back in the computer. I apologize for the visual incongruity in the video because I switched to dark mode. But anyway, back on the computer, we're going to go to your ROMs partition. We're going to go to the saves folder, then current profile, then the saves again, and then DOSBox pure. Here, you're going to see a list of zip files for all of your DOS games. Simply delete the file for the game that you want to reset, and you're all set. Next time you launch that game on the Ambernic, the game will relaunch the file list, and you'll be able to pick a correct auto-launch. And finally, we're going to cover ports. Now, one big note up front here. At the time this video is being published, there was a change in Garlic OS regarding how ports see the controls or the device's controller. This change required ports to be reconfigured to work with the new controller settings. And at this time, not all ports have changed their settings to work with this update. And due to this change, that creates a threshold in the Garlic OS versions. Black Serif has actually kept the last version of Garlic, which supports the old controller scheme. This is version 134, which should be highlighted right here. Now, in time, the ports should update to work with the new controller scheme, but for now, you might need to use version 134 to get the ported game working. And if you are reinstalling Garlic OS, remember to get file 1 and 2, uh, otherwise it won't extract. But enough with those details, let's download some ports. We're going to go to the website, rg35xx.com. This is a really good resource for everything rg35xx. But we're just going to go to the ports section. Here you can see we got various ports available for this console. For this example, I'm going to download Mario 64 port. See it links to somebody's Dropbox. Go ahead and download it. Um, also going to download Blood. Seems to be semi-popular and it's really easy to get started. At this point in the video, you know the deal. We're going to download the files. We're going to extract them uh, on our SD card in the ROMs folder. We should have a ports folder. Go ahead, copy the files that you downloaded to the ports folder. Although you do have to extract them. They can't just be in zip files. And another thing, some ports will have special instructions. For instance, this Mario 64 emulator requires a copy of the original Mario 64 ROM, and it needs to be renamed to baserom.us.z64. It's all in the README, but you got to get that file from the internet and put it in the SM64 folder. Once the card's ready, we're going to switch over to the old Ambernic, fire up the new ports icon. The icon is vaguely reminiscent of a command prompt. At least it is with the default icon. You can see the ports listed here. We're going to head launch Mario 64. Let it do its thing. 
and there we go, Mario 64. It actually runs fairly well on this device, considering it's not supposed to support anything beyond PlayStation 1, uh, you know, 32-bit console, but there you go. And if we exit Mario 64, you can launch Blood. We see Blood launches. Looks uh, very Doom-like, you know. I can imagine that this might be built off of uh, some engine from Doom, something like that, something similar. Maybe Quake, who knows. But there you go. We have ports running, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a Diablo port I haven't tried yet. There's Cave Story, which if you haven't played is a great game. And uh, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with ports. So there you have it. That's uh, the port section, and while I'm wrapping up, honestly, that's the video as well. Hope you learned a little. Now, uh, go have fun.